let's uh, talk about what happened today uh, in Abuja, where a book titled Walking with Buhari was launched, book written by a former spokesperson to President Muhammad Buhari, Mr. Femi Adishina. At that book launch, former uh, head of state, Yakubu Gawan, was present. President Bola Tinubu was also present, as well as former President Muhammad Buhari, including his uh, former vice, uh, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, former uh, governors and uh, President Salvin's governors and the Senate president were equally uh, uh, present at that event. Well, there were different bands thrown at that event, interesting ones, and those ones that cause for some kind of reflection. But let me allow you to listen to first and foremost uh, to former President Muhammad Buhari. We were as transparent and accountable as possible being aware of the fact that posterity was the ultimate judge. We kept records of our stewardship, knowing that we will always be required to account for the trust entrusted to us. This event today is part of the accounting for our two terms in office, and I thank those who have labored day and night to ensure that this history is recorded for now and the future. Thank you so much. You heard uh, President Buhari there. What about President Balatinobu? He said uh, all through the time that uh, the president uh, left office up until now, he's not gotten a call. He's not asking for any favor. Uh, but then, these are some of uh, the words of President Tinobu at that event today. I inherit the asset and liability of my predecessor. No matter what I say, we always joke sometimes, and you say you can never please Nigerians. But yours is to focus, work hard, and satisfy your conscience. And we will not rest, I promise you, until every agent of darkness is completely eliminated. It's a sovereign country, responsibility for nation building, staying on course. I am determined to do just that because I campaigned for this job and you told me in our discussions it's not easy but I went out there dancing for it making promises doing kokuma doing all kalangos making music so I cannot complain I will be there well, let's get talking about the intention of the book that was launched today. Of course, you perhaps we see very uh, interesting pictures of uh, those who have run this country, at least in the last few years, together, side by side, unveiling this book. Well, the author of the book, Mr. Femi Adeshina, a former journalist who served... Uh, <laughs> who's this? <laughs> Are you see a journalist is I see one. It was a spokesperson for ADS. He's the longest serving, uh, longest, the first person who's served the longest in that capacity for any president uh, since we know. Thank you so much for the addition. And good to see you back. Thank you. How have very, you been? Very well, very well. Congratulations very well. on the book launch. It looked well attended today. And uh, it's been a long time you will see the cal that caliber of people uh, but those who served in the cabinet under President Buhari and those who are in the president cabinet, how does that feel? It feels good. It feels good. It feels good. I, I think it's like uh, a report card for the former president. Almost everybody who served him was there. And it shows that they still believe in him till tomorrow. They just turned up. Ministers, director general, special advisors. It was a huge turnout. Mm. This looks like your own personal diary of the day-to-day <laughs> affairs. I see your mind, the way you talk, uh, 
Uh, mm -hmm. Even when you think that your views are not popular, you see, say it the way you wanted to say it anyways, mm -hmm. it, it sounded like your language uh, right here. Mm -hmm. uh, but, I mean, this is like a reflection, isn't it? Yes, it is. It, it features in the headline, Reflections of a Special Advisor. It is. What is your, uh, the summary of your reflections of eight years working with uh, President Buhari? The summary is that not many people know who the true Muhammad Buhari is. And having worked with him for eight years, having been exposed to what people don't know, the onus is on me to document it mm. so that our adventure, some other people will read it and get to know who the true Muhammad Buhari is. That's the intention. So, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm saying this with a sense of uh, responsibility, trying to break down the issues. Uh, 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 there are about four or five Muhammad Buharis. <laughs> <laughs> the, the General Buhari. Yes. Uh, mm. The Buhari who started running for office. And yes. the fourth try, he became president. There is a Buhari who was sworn in and the one who says that um, I am for nobody, I am for everybody. Uh, and the Buhari who got sick. And the Buhari who came back. And the Buhari who ended. Who, the, those who believe that it's highly unpolitical and uh, perhaps politically selfish too. There are those who have criticized him and said so many have different views. But the Buhari that people said was Femi Adishino's friend, and the reason why he picked you to speak for him in the first place, and the Buhari who got sick, and the one who came back from sickness. Which Buhari do you think that Nigeria did not know? There are many narratives about President Buhari, and it depends on where you are considering it from. Is that classic story of the six or seven blind men who touched an elephant? Those who touched decide. Say, ah, elephant is like a wall, a wide wall. Those who touched the trunk say, ah, it's like a stick, a wood. Those who touch the tail say, ah, an elephant uh, uh, is covey and all that. So it depends on where you touch. A lot of people have different perspectives, different narratives about President Muhammad Dubari, depending on what they think they know and what they think they were exposed to about him. That's why I felt this book was necessary, so that the real and the true Muhammad Buhari can be known. Summarize the Muhammad Buhari that you know for us. A patriot, somebody who loves Nigeria dearly, fair-minded man, fair-minded. Those who call him nepotist, those who call him bigot, don't know him. Very fair-minded man, a man who will never seek to impose his own religion on you, and who respects your religion. I, I devoted a good part of this book to that. When my mother died in 2013, I invited him. He was not president then. I invited him to the commendation service in Lagos. He flew all the way from Cardina to Lagos to attend a Christian program. He stayed throughout. Yet, some people will say it's a religious because. A bigot will never enter a worship house that is not of his own religion. So he came to a Christian service and stayed all true. People will say it's a bigot. I don't know what bigotry is all about. The same Buhari, our first Christmas in office in December 2015, he called me. said, I know you are a church person. Can you please go and be with your family in this season? Why you now come back in January? Me too, I will take a leave and go and rest. A bigot will never... Talk about your religion, if it is not his religion. So, and I didn't see a bone of bigotry in his body. And they, they say he's a nepotist. I, I have never seen it. There is some, an account in that book. You get to see it. When he removed Ita Epeyong as DG DSS, and there had been talks about lopsided uh, uh, appointments, so he, appoint, he, he, he appointed somebody from Katsina State, Lawal Daura. When he called me and said, announce this new DGDSS, I asked him, I said, Mr. President, people are beginning to talk, the event, uh, appointments are lopsided. 
You removed a man from South South. Why don't you replace him with another man from South South? And it took time to explain to me that before he makes appointments, committees are set up, a team is set up to search for who qualifies for the office. He says, when they finish their work, they recommend three people in most cases for that position. Now he says, if I bypass the person who is best, who is number one, because of his tribe, because of his ethnicity, because of his religion, because of his language, say Allah will judge me on the last day. But was that the reason why most of those uh, at the end of affairs in security were mostly from his region? It explains it that... That they were, no in, they were incompetent people did, from the I, did, I didn't say that, and that is not implied. It means that when there is a search, the best is thrown up, and the best is who President Buhari is. A lot of people who have been uh, analyzing and appraising uh, President Buhari's uh, uh, time in office, and one of them is also someone who served in his cabinet. And those descriptions include being ineffective. Uh, he doesn't care. As long as it, does, it doesn't affect him, he's indecisive. Who was it? I mean, there, there is a former minister who, who was on the program. He said, look, if Buhari appoints you a former minister of communication. I watched this. He said, if Buhari appoints you, he will not even, if you don't go and it, 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 it was twisted. It was twisted. Did you watch it? I watched it. I watched it. I watched it. Minister Shitu, I watched it. What he said was that Buhari gave him free hand to run. But it was twisted. It was twisted as being not interested and as being ineffective. I'm sure if you ask Minister Shitu again, the true meaning of how he said, he will tell you that his words were twisted. Well, but, I mean, if those, who, <laughs> if those who say that when the president gives you an... Uh, gives you a job to do, he never just, he just allows you to do it yes. even when you are failing. That, that those who failed in, no, their, no. in their roles as minister, and the president kept them for eight years. You didn't appoint them. You didn't appoint them. But is Nigerians, they, they, they serve Nigerians. And is Nigerians the appointer, would judge them. Is the appointer that can judge them. But Nigerians, they were working for Nigerians. Uh, well, well and I, the, the person, let me quote the good book, it says, who are you that judges another man's servant? It is before his master that he either rises or falls. That's what the good book says. So it is the person who appoints you that can really judge you. I mean, because in, he, he, there must be things he gave you to do by which he will judge you. And if by his own judgment you have met the, 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 the goals he set for you, then who are you to say... Uh, such person didn't meet the goal. How would you describe President Buhari's pace? I mean, this reflection is in his, his pace to, uh, to handling things. Uh, the first attempt in his activities will be uh, appointing ministers, which took him about six months to do. And there are those who will say that sluggish tendency affected the economy largely. Uh, with a, a benefit of hindsight, looking at things now, do you think that there could have been a better pace in the, uh, in the former president's handling of some things? Now look at the first term, took about that six months. The second term, ministers were appointed in, in August. After, the, after they were sworn in, I mean, after he they was were sworn in in May. Yes, they, they, they were sworn in in August. That's the fourth month after he was sworn Yes. And those who will say that is even still very late. No. No, for it, someone who is coming back into office, no, yeah. no, it, it, it depends. It depends on what were the variables. In the first term, you had all the stories how handover was not complete, there was virtually no records, and all that, and all that. And things had to start afresh. I remember that the first three, four, five months in the first term, President Buhari was taking briefings from permanent secretaries of all ministries day after day, day after day, day after day, because there are virtually were no handing over records. I mean, one area that gave a lot of Nigerians worry, and an economist here on this program had said, President Buhari set the, 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 the regime of President Buhari set this country back 20 years economically. It's, a, it's the opinion of that economist. You know what you're back. <laughs> <opinion. laughs> He's never changed. He has, a, right, changed he, has a, he has a right to his opinion. <laughs> one thing about economists is that one does not always agree with the next one. 
That's one thing. The I've, indices. Uh, that's what I've noticed about economics. Including the indices. It's like the economists are like your mechanics. But what about the indices? When Mr. you Adishina. take, wait, let me make my point. When you <laughs> take your car to a, a mechanic, the mechanic tells you what's wrong with it. And then you want to get a second, second opinion. You go to another mechanic. He rubbishes what the first mechanic has told you. And he says, this is what is wrong with Stop your car. Stop using roadside mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> Use proper professional mechanics. Because what the indices are saying, even your example... Even professional your, mechanics... Your, your example, Mr. Adesha, <laughs> use proper... And I know by now, you should be using new cars. So, because this book launch looked like a very good one for you today. Well, we give those who are speculating that you made a billion we for me today. We give God the glory. We give but congratulations we give anyway. But, I mean, one of those things that actually got a lot of people worried uh, in the twilight of President Buhari's uh, uh, time in office is a narrow design. Yeah. And uh, the personality of Godwin Emefiele and the way he handled the CBN. Uh, you, you referenced uh, that particular scenario here. Yes. And if I may just read part of what you wrote here, uh, there is no denying that the narrow redesign policy gave us cleaner elections. It was people who had too much money that had problems with it. When it was said that the new notes were not available, over 260 million naira were, was formed in, with one bank chairman. Did I take on the Supreme Court on the issue? No, I could not have. Some APC governors went to court. I refused to judge people by my own standard. I'm not materialistic, but it would be too much to expect all Nigerians to be the same way. It is not fair to condemn anybody, but it is up to them and their conscience. I want to continue to conduct myself a clear conscience so that when I go to bed, I slept off immediately. May, do you think the president would have been sleeping well looking back at that decision that a lot of people thought it was perhaps one of the worst decisions in his eight years of office? It is perspectival. With people who died in the banking hall, those who it, lost it, their it, lives it, because it, of that policy? It, it, if you listen to his speech today, he said there were hard decisions that were taken in government. That was why he apologized before he left, and he's still apologizing to those who are negatively affected. He said a country, from time to time, will still have to take hard decisions before we get to where we are going. That interview that you read was done in the last days of President Buhari in office. It was May 29. So he has had time to review the Naira redesign policy, and that was his opinion. Mm. So, uh, I mean, because some of these policies, some of the APC uh, chieftains had said there, were, there was a pact. This is a theory. It was a pact that the president had, and never, the president never supported Bolatinobu, not didn't want mm. to support him. You know, there was a pact that he had with Atiku Abaka of the PDP. Mm -hmm. And these are, I mean, I'm saying that the APC people are the ones saying this, mm -hmm. and that. You know, he, he, he's, he's a man who stay aloof and he never cared much of, uh, on politics. He left the APC in the, in the rain and left them up and dry. Because they don't know. We excuse their ignorance. Whoever said that is ignorant. What is the fact? The fact is that the president is an APC member. He still said it today, that he remains committed to the APC. And the process that led to the emergence of a president he was neutral. He was neutral. He could have uh, teleguided it if he wanted, but he was neutral. Well, I mean, looking back, how would you, uh, and perhaps uh, uh, before I ask you that question, mm. would you like to apologize tonight uh, for some people you rechristened um, <laughs> uh, in your very early time in, in office? You called some Nigerians whalers. Would you like, looking back, would you like to apologize to them tonight? Were they willing? They were willing. So you see, see them the same manner. They have fitted, fitted them because they were willing. They thought that the way to get the government to do their bidding was to shout at the rooftops, was to try to distract the government as much as possible. And let me tell you the history of willing willers. The PDP spokesman at that time was a man named Olisa Metu. Anything the government did, a government that was new, anything he did, quickly, he will issue a statement. It rained too much, statement. It didn't rain at all, statement. 
He saw a wall gecko in his room. Statement. It is worried that he's behind it. Now, one day I just did a tweet. I said, these people don't know that they are out of power. And they will be out of power for a while to come. And I ended that tweet with willing willers. I was referring to the PDP, and particularly the spokesman, Elisa Metu. Then, the, the, the ones they call netizens online now, took it up and said, yo, he called us willing willers. Did I call them willing willers? No. I, I was talking specifically of PDP. They decided to adopt that description for themselves. And I felt, well, if you have adopted it, you have a right to it. In fact, I should even charge you for copyright violation. <laughs> <laughs> so you still maintain your stand that the PDP are whalers? Well, the way they comported themselves in the early days of Buhari government. I mean, they, how, how they would were you describe opposition party as, as whalers? Those they who were, are whaling. They were whaling. They were whaling. Don't, don't you think it, it sounded derogatory? No, 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 no. It's not derogatory because that was exactly what they were doing. It's a description of what they were doing. They were wailing. Oh, they were, they were, they were. I mean, even when they feel uh, that your government was not performing. The, the government hadn't even started. That tweet, go and check it, it was done in August 2015, when the government was barely two months. It was done. Uh, how did you cope? I, I know you are, you are, uh, uh, you are a four square uh, gospel <laughs> church member. Uh, if Ruben Abati said there's a spiritual side to the villa, how did you cope when you were in office? Did you see those... Uh, if you read that Tell book. us about it. It's there in that book. No, say it. You're on TV now. Uh, Those who don't uh, have access to uh, it. Uh, uh, what uh, did you do? Were you doing all I, night vigil and I, fasting? I didn't see anything like that. No witches, no wizards, nothing like that in the villa. Ruben Abadi said the house they gave him in the villa, he didn't sleep there for one night. Because when he attempted to sleep there, fire just broke out in the place. So he ran away. I slept in my house for eight years. Not only did I sleep, I was snoring. You covered it with the blood of Jesus? Uh, oh, oh, naturally, as a Christian, you, you, you pray anywhere you are. But I was even snoring. I snored so much that I woke myself up with the sound of my snoring. That shows you that I was at peace. Maybe there were uh, friendlier <laughs> spiritual, uh, spiritual forces <laughs> like that, that. that didn't work with Ruben Abad, but work with you. <laughs> nothing like that. Nothing like that. So, uh, and so the, the, post, villa, uh, the villa was cleansed of the it, spiritual... It's not haunted at all. It's not a haunted place. It's not a haunted place. And the question I raised, the post I gave to Ruben Abad was that, if you said the villa was haunted, why did they fight tooth and nail to win the 2015 election? If they had won the 2015 election and President Jonathan had asked him to continue as special advisor video, he would have continued in a place that was haunted. So, that's it. Um, in trying to uh, wrap up the conversation, Mr. Adishino, um, for those who are heavily, because, and I know you are, uh, you are a forever Buharist, forever. Uh, there is hardly anything anybody can say about Muhammad Buhari that, you will, uh, that is... Uh, that uh, you will not debate. I uh, said in my speech today that Buhari for me is a conviction. Mm. It's a conviction. Next to your faith? Uh, yes. Maybe after my faith. Mm. But Buhari for me is a conviction. The man I admire so, so much. Even with his frailties? Well, every, don't you have frailties? Don't I have? Everybody has. Mm. Everybody has. So, I mean, uh, those who think that it was a failure of eight years of governing this country, what would you say to them? They have a right to their people. That's what I was saying. Without using that word, those words. <laughs> well, what I was saying is that there is no blindness like deliberate blindness. When you decide to be deliberately blind, your eyes are open and you see nothing. That's it. That's how I describe those people. That book you have there, there are about 80 pages of various achievements embedded in the middle of it in, in different sectors. Some people who have given, who read it, they say, ha, this man walked. On a final note, Mr. Adeshino, and I know that if I allow you, we have to add two hours for you to <laughs> chronicle Buhari's performance. Yeah. But if there is one thing that you have given, they are given the opportunity to say about Buhari in terms of his performance in eight years, what would you say is the ultimate? The ultimate for me is that the economy was diversified under him. Since 1960, 
Nigeria, it had been a mantra for government after government that we would diversify our economy. We would diversify our economy. Yet, petroleum remained the mainstay of the Nigerian economy. But under Buhari, petroleum from 80% contribution to GDP it began to contribute just 9%. It succeeded in diversifying the economy. Agriculture, ICT, even manufacturing inked up a little bit. So, he succeeded in diversifying the economy. Uh, the economy, a lot of people think that, in fact, that was his worst, worst sector of also, performance. It is also perspective. No, in this are saying so. It, no, no, Nigerians not, became 100, 133 million Nigerians mm, became multidimensionally not, poor. Not, not all in this. Almost half of Nigerian population cannot afford uh, a, a, a dollar to feed per day. And what happened? Unemployment to, went to 33 percent, Mr. Additional. Inflation rate went to what was, uh, what was, in almost all the eight years of what was, President uh, Buhari's what was, and, uh, time in what office. What was unemployment when he got there in 2015? Campaigning towards 2015 election, he used about 35 million Nigerians being unemployed. That was the statistics as that the build-up to 2015 election. So it's not new. It had always been there. It has always been there. But Buhari uh, compounded it. Yeah, but, but in some other areas, he ameliorated things and improved on things, particularly diversification of the economy. The convinced Buhari. Yes. Uh, Mr. Femi <laughs> Adesuna, it's good to see you. Yes. Uh, you. It's been some time, yeah. and uh, I wish you the very best. Thank you. So what are you up to now? A lot of things. I've been writing this. Okay. We left government seven months ago. So in seven months... We were able to produce. I this. was able to produce. A retired uh, journalist, a former no, presidential not, not, spokesperson. Not, not retired. I have some things up my sleeve. And you, what is that? Uh, you you're see. going to the United Nations. <laughs> you see you're going to be the governor of your state. You, no, no, what no, exactly no. is that? I'm not a politician. No, I would, I would <laughs> but you were in political office for uh, eight years. Uh, yeah, as a professional in a political office. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't want to tell us what you are up to now? Uh, no, you, it will never hide. It's like pregnancy. Pregnancy never hides. So we should expect it. Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Let me add this, you know, a former spokesperson of mm -hmm. former President Buhari. Mm -hmm. Thank you indeed, and I wish you the very best. Thank the you. author of Walking with Buhari, a retired journalist. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't I, like I he doesn't like I'll never agree with you on that. <laughs> Thank you. It's good to see you again, Mr. <laughs> <laughs>